The chapter continues on Egghead Island, where we left off in the last chapter when Kuma finally lost his humanity. Kuma left like a legend, which made many characters cry. And the worst part was, Bonnie had apparently overheard everything. Dr. Vegapunk talked to her, and she confirmed it. So now she knew exactly what had happened to her father. Dr. Vegapunk didn't like this at all, as he had now broken his promise to Kuma. Bonnie turned back into a little girl and ran up to Dr. Vegapunk to hug him and apologize. After that, some time apparently passed, as Bonnie seemed quite happy again during their conversation. But there was a reason for that. What's that old-ass Dr. Vegapunk? asked Bonnie. That's a gift Kuma left with me for your 10th birthday. She was as happy as a little child, which she was after all. It's a sapphire necklace. How pretty. It looks like the sun. I'll treasure it forever she said. Dr. Vegapunk explained to her that it was apparently some kind of protective pendant to protect her from evil influences. They then talked about the Straw Hat Boy, aka Luffy, whom Bonnie had met earlier. Straw Hat? So he's the son of a bitch of dad's old buddy, right? Asked Bonnie. Indeed, I was stunned when you both showed up together, explained Dr. Vegapunk. And look at the panel. If you didn't know which characters these were, it would look so funny. A ten-year-old girl next to Grandpa Vegapunk sticking his tongue out. Their conversation continued, and Vegapunk Punk explained to Bonnie that the Straw Hat Pirate saved him while Bonnie was in the room. But enough trash talk. Now, it was finally back to the present, and Bonnie was half dying while Saturn, sorry, I meant J motherfucking G of course, had choked her. He told her, while he was choking her, that Kuma had finally died. Bonnie was angry and desperate at the same time, because the situation seemed hopeless. Not only was she trapped, but also Dr. Vegapunk, Sanji, and Frankie. Luffy also looked like half a portion, completely exhausted. With the last of his strength, he asked if he could have some meat to regain his strength, and a dwarf in front of him heard this too. Meanwhile, Kizaru woke up again and had to analyze the situation. He noticed Bonnie and Sentomaru, who was also trapped because he was Dr. Vegapunk's bodyguard. The situation did not go unnoticed and the news traveled around the world. A siege involving an emperor? It'll be a miracle if there are no casualties, said one of the founding fathers. Meanwhile, Dragon and Ivenkov wondered where Kuma was going, if there was any personality left in him. So Bonnie was still trapped by Saturn and thought to herself, if I'm gonna get killed here Anway, then I'll take you with me. She transformed into her big muscle form and then freed herself from the hold. Meanwhile, she screamed out Nika's name and threw an absolutely weak punch into JG that he didn't even notice. The only thing he noticed was the Nika coming out of Bonnie. He was probably thinking of dropping the word Nika in his new album, but oh man, what a name. Thank God it's spelled with a K and not a G. Anyway, Bonnie was now trapped by JG again and his power was immense but also mysterious as Bonnie lost her powers shortly afterwards. Meanwhile, we also learned a bit more about Nika from JG. So you too know that name. You really are his daughter. That being said, you don't fully understand its meaning, explained JG. But while Saturn was hard at work with Bonnie, Luffy had already been hard at work eating. Someone had given him food, probably the dwarf from earlier. Where did that food come from? Who is responsible for this? Asked JG Saturn. Put him in sea stone cuffs immediately. He was aware of the danger Luffy would be if he regained his strength, but that wasn't the only worry. Bonnie had tried everything, but her abilities just weren't working. I can't even change his age, she said. JG had a suitable answer ready. Bonnie, you stupid bitch, you owe that power of yours to me. We conducted experiments to determine whether extract infusions could grant a baby an ability without feeding them the fruit normally. Well, it was a success, but the fruit itself is useless now. The ability can transform you into a state that matches any future perceived to be possible. But that means the possibilities become limited as your future becomes more certain, Saturn explained. That was pretty gloomy stuff and an absolute nightmare for Bonnie. But salvation was at hand because Superman, aka Kuma, flew through the air on his way to rescue his daughter. Meanwhile, Saturn continued to explain to Bonnie the whole story of her and her mother's lives, that her mother was bought to marry Jawaz to become a drug experiment for Saturn. The illness she got because of this was inherited by Bonnie from her. It completely knocked Bonnie's socks off and she started shaking. All the suffering she had to experience in her life was practically due to Saturn. But JG only had one question. Look at it from my perspective. Do you comprehend the feeling of the insects you step on. Of course not, you fucking bitch. Haha, <laughs> lol, said JG, which finally destroyed Bonnie. But now our Superman, aka Kuma, had appeared. The soldiers wondered if it was a pacifista, but from his paws you could tell he was the real Kuma. A soldier radioed that he was heading straight for Saturn and Bonnie's position, and how he was doing it. He didn't care that anyone and everyone was shooting at him. He tanked every single shot and kept running. 
He had the absolute determination to save his daughter. Meanwhile, Bonnie was so distraught that she started crying like a little girl again, screaming for her father. It was all too much noise for Saturn, and he decided to kill Bonnie. So did the soldiers who were next to Saturn. Blow this bitch's head off, they shouted. Kuma heard this and sniped them first with his FaZe Clan aim, but Saturn was still there. He threw Bonnie to the ground and was ready to end them once and for all. But just before he could impale her, Kuma arrived at the last moment and protected her with his back. And not only that, because Kuma was pissed, he was more than just pissed off. He turned around while clutching one of Saturn's legs and took a very strong swing. A father's fury describes the panel very well. Even Saturn knew exactly, yep, this is going to hurt. But unfortunately, that was it for the chapter. I would have loved to see Kuma punch him in the face, but I'll have to wait until the next chapter. Otherwise, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos. Have a happy new year and see you next time, my friends.